That's right, Guardians of Live. Chris Pratt from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Plus, Abby Ryder Fortson from Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. And Emily King performs. And if you watch on DVR, set it to record live with Kelly and Mark. Weekdays at 9 a.m. on WDAY, WDAZ. You bet your life. You seriously asking me this question, Jay? <laughs> Call the island. What are we doing over here? Boosting the economy. Yeah, give me that money. Every weekday. I'm going to give it to you like an Italian uncle. Here you go. You get yourself a little something there. there, 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 there. <laughs> weekdays at 3.30 p.m. You're watching WDAY Extra. Hot Mike with Dom Izzo. Really? Really, Dom? No. I like what Dom's doing. Okay. Dom Izzo. Jeez. Come on, Dom. What do you think I am, a magician? Yeah, I'm fired up, Dom. What else could I say? Absolutely. I was great to get on the field, and then Dom came up to me, and I'm trying to walk away from me. I just wanted to enjoy myself out there. Hot Mike. Great job. <laughs> There's got to be some kind of intelligent question about something. Is a hot mic. Hot mic. On the networks of WDAY. You know, if it's not about sports, I find it very hard to concentrate. Here's Dom Izzo. Dom Izzo. Good Wednesday morning. Happy Hump Day. And this is the I Hope You Stayed Up Late edition of Hot Mic on WDAY Extra. And in forum.com on this third day of May 2023. 70 degrees coming our way. Let's go. About three weeks too late, but I guess better late than never on that. Welcome to our show, everybody, on a Wednesday. To our new audience in Sioux Falls, we say good morning. And welcome uh, to the show. A lot going on today as we've reached the middle part of the week, anticipating a fantastic weekend, and hopefully weather-wise as well. We're creeping up on uh, Minnesota fishing opener, Mother's Day is around the corner, all that kind of good stuff. And we're ready to rock and roll here uh, with a packed show uh, today. We'll run the gamut, chat some football like we always do. Got some hoops we're going to chat with as well, including with UND's uh, Paul Sather as uh, he has rebuilt the basketball team up uh, in Grand Forks with a couple of interesting additions, both notable names that has happened here over the last couple of weeks. So excited about our conversation coming up later on in our show. I mentioned staying up late uh, to start our show. I uh, tried in vain on that Warriors-Lakers game when I... Last saw it, and we'll show you the highlights here in a few minutes, that uh, it was like a 14-point Laker lead, and like everything happens in the NBA, of course, it came down to the final shot, and uh, we'll show you that here in just a little bit. The Twins, after a, I would say, a nondescript series with Kansas City, I mean, the Royals are so bad, it's just like, I'm not sure how you get too excited for a series there now out on the road and starting they're playing AL central teams. We talked about this with Dick Bramer last week. This is now they have basically not played their own division through the entire month of April and now have a stretch here of nine games, 10 games where they're playing division teams. It was four with Kansas city and they opened up last night in Chicago. Now, just before we play the highlights here, the white Sox have been God awful eight and 21 coming into last night's game. They had yet to win a series this season. They had lost 10 games in a row prior to them winning on Sunday against Tampa. And here's a great stat. They had a no-hitter going against the Rays into the seventh inning, I want to say, on Saturday, and then gave up 10 runs in the seventh inning and ended up losing the game. That's how things are going for the White Sox. Okay, so with that backdrop... Here's the game last night at the former Comiskey Park, I used to will call it that, as they sent Joe Ryan to the hill last night, and he's been their ace with Sonny Gray, and once again, he was tremendous on the mound, mowing down White Sox hitters, six innings, one hit, 
two walks, seven strikeouts. They turn the game over to Jorge Lopez, and bam. Eloy Jimenez absolutely mashes this, and Jorge Lopez has been really good up until then. Two-run shot. The home run celebrations we're going to get to in a second are really good. It's 2-1. Nick Gordon comes up, though, just trying to get on base on the top of the eighth, and he bombs this to left center. Right center, excuse me. The land of 10,000 rakes vest is back. We're tied at two. Bottom of the 10th, Caleb Thielbar, though, gives up the game-winning hit to Andrew Benatende. And the White Sox walk off the Twins 3-2, the final score. And that's a bad loss with a capital B. Can't be losing to teams like Chicago. That's, by the way, (laughs) that's their first winning streak of the season for the White Sox. They had not won consecutive games yet. Now they've won two in a row as they walk it off, just totally throwing away a great effort by uh, Joe Ryan. That goes by the wayside, and the White Sox win the opener of this series with game two coming up uh, tonight in Chicago. And again, you look at where things are. This is a division that is bad from... One to five, and I'm going to say one. The Twins are all right. But when you go from second down to fifth in the division standings here, Cleveland's under 500. The Tigers are seven games under 500. The White Sox, as you see now, are nine and 21. The Royals are seven and 23. It is a bad division. And you got to take advantage of those kind of games, especially when you have tied it up, have a chance to uh, win the game and can't push across the game winner. Those are the games you 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 lose now and you pay for it in September. Those are the games that, you, boy, you, boy, you wish you had that one back. You wish you had, you know, a couple of these other ones that they've let slip through their fingers here. Especially when you see some of the other teams that are just rip-roaring here. Tampa's 24-6. and six. Baltimore's 20-9. and nine. I mean, some of these teams are just ripping off wins left and right to start their season. So, difficult one last night. Twins will... Uh, Be back on the mound here uh, for game two of their set coming up uh, tonight in Chicago. Another six o'clock start uh, for their game tonight as Louis Varlin gets uh, brought up, of course, with the Twins pitching injuries, which we talked about on Monday's show. And we'll visit later on with Dick Bramer since it is Wednesday uh, with Maeda and Malley both out. Uh, You're going to see lots of Louis Varlin, lots of Bailey Ober in the starting rotation. It'll be Varlin tonight against Dylan Cease, one of the best in baseball going uh, for Chicago. Can the White Sox dare to make it three straight wins against uh, as they go against the Twins? By the way, that's the other uh, City Connect jerseys, whatever they're called, that the White Sox that uh, of you're seeing Dylan Cease there. That is somewhat better than what the Mariners decided to trot out. We're going to get into that later in the show. Um, little news that happened late yesterday around supper time. My phone started blowing up. When anytime that happens, it's normally the the bat signals going off and uh, coming from the north side of Fargo because there's going to be a there's a head coaching vacancy now uh, at North Dakota State and it's on the wrestling team as Roger Kish was introduced yesterday as the new head wrestling coach at the University of Oklahoma and he leaves after 12 years as the head coach at NDSU. Just off a great year where the Bison were in contention to win the Big 12 Wrestling Championship. Finishes with 109 wins and 69 losses in dual meets. 50 and 30 in conference duels. Total of 14 years at NDSU. He spent two years as Bucky Mon's uh, top assistant, and then he took over when, when Bucky retired. Bison were 11 and three this year, earned their highest ranking in school history. They made it all the way up to 15. They had two all Americans at the NCAA wrestling championships in both Jared Franick and Michael Caliendo who were fantastic. And that basically had become an institution at NDSU had been there for so long and goes to, to a fellow big 12 school. Uh, Oklahoma came up here. You'll remember in early February, middle of February, we televised that uh, that duel. The Bison handled OU. They were 
outstanding that night at uh, at the shack. And I don't know if that was a rehearsal there or a early job interview, but clearly uh, they were they, the Sooners came away impressed with that and decided to make a change here. And Matt Larson now has an opening at a pretty prominent sport. I know some will either roll their eyes or not necessarily give it the due attention that it deserves, but this is a high-profile spot with a team that is really, really good. Now, we talk about these sports all the time. You know, we hit football and men's basketball all the time about the portal. And wrestling is right in that same boat. It's not like wrestling's not like any sport is immune to have this happen to them. And if I have my dates correct, uh, it's when the, the when they put the portal windows in, it was for 60 days after championship selection. And I'm not a great math mind, but the championship selection for the NCAA tournament came out about the middle of March. So there's about 10 to 12 days left in the transfer portal window for wrestling. So that's something to look. Cause I had fans tweet to me at last night. Well, okay, well there might be some of their top guys. And I'm looking at Michael Caliendo that may go with him. Now Caliendo who we've had on the show told us he came here to wrestle. He wanted to wrestle with Jared Frannick and we know Frannick has decided to come back and use his extra year of eligibility after his phenomenal season that ended up with a uh, a fifth place finish at uh, the NCAA or fourth place finish at the NCAA wrestling championships, that's a concern. It has to be. Now, are there guys on the staff that are willing to uh, take on the mantle of this? Maybe the, there are a couple of these guys have been long time. Uh, Kish lieutenants. I don't know if they would go with him. That's something to be discussed there. I had a couple of names thrown at me in the wrestling community that have distinct Bison ties. Andrew McGee is part of the Bison staff now. Would he be a guy to look at? Potentially. There's one right across the river that you could look at as well. And Chris Nelson, who's been... Gosh, he's been with the Dragons almost as long as Rogers been over uh, at NDSU. Yeah, Chris has been there for 14 years as the head coach um, of the Dragons. But he's a former Bison. He's a three-time All-American. He's in the school's Hall of Fame. That makes a ton of sense. Adam Ajo is another one to throw out there. He's now the coach at the University of Mary. Another former Bison. If, if I'm Matt Larson, I'm looking right across the river. I, I, I don't make any bones about it. Chris Nelson's a bison, has had great success. If, if, if he's so interested, then that's the guy I go talk to. And it's not like the Dragons have been poor at wrestling. They've been pretty good over the stretch that, uh, that Chris has been there. Now, there could be some stigma of hiring a, a Division II coach, but if they want to, quote-unquote, keep it in-house and keep it in the family, then Chris is a heck of a guy, and uh, knowing him as I know him a little bit, I, I think that would that would go over well with the Bison wrestling alumni if they were to go that route. So something to keep an eye on. But uh, congratulations to Roger and uh, built a a heck of a Division One program. He had a tough job to follow in the legend that is Bucky Mon, and there's no there's no one else that will be like Bucky. None, and to step in and especially in a transition going from the Western wrestling conference to the big 12 and the step up in competition that was going to be. And the bison have had a couple of lean years. They fought through that, but have also achieved some heights that have never happened in this, in this division one run capped off by what they did this year with two more all Americans and the bar has been set and I'll be interested to see where, uh, where things go from here. And we'll keep our, uh, our eyes on this, our ears open to see what happens uh, going forward with the now open position uh, of head wrestling coach. They, they don't op- open up often. I'm trying to think of the last coach to hire for Matt Larson was probably, I don't know, 
Well, Justin St. Clair left. He was assistant track coach, but Stevie was there as the main guy. Um, I was probably going to say it was Jory Collins might be it. And that was uh, four years ago last month. That was April of 2019 when Jory Collins got the women's basketball uh, job because Jen Lopez has been there at volleyball. Michael Ryan's been there at soccer for a few years. So it's uh, it might be for uh, the, the last major opening to happen at NDSU. So something to keep an eye on there. Uh, before we wrap up our opening segment, I mentioned staying up late for game one of what the NBA is hoping is a seven-game series. The NBA would hope that this series would, would have happened around later in the Western Conference Finals, but they'll take it any time that it's Steph Curry and LeBron James facing off against one another as they did last night to open up game one of the Western Conference semis. This is right about when at least I was fading on my couch. I had LeBron cans a three. The Lakers are up 10. How about our guy D'Lo? D'Angelo Russell. Why can't the Timberwolves find players like him? Drives and scores. Mentioned Lakers got up by 14, but you knew Golden State was going to make a run. Jordan Poole, three. That cuts it to a three-point game. Crowd is going crazy at the Chase Center. Draymond leaves, and of course, Steph is going to make that. Now we're tied at 112. Lakers get the ball back. Again, D'Lo. Are you kidding? Had 19 last night. This is a huge possession. And Anthony Davis with a monster block there. LeBron is fouled. He makes one of two at the line. So it's a three-point Laker lead. Golden State with the ball. You know Steph's going to get it. No, Jordan Poole shoots it and misses it. Lakers get the rebound, and they win it. And now lead the series one game to none as they go on the road and beat the Warriors. Davis goes for 30 and 23. Monster game for Anthony Davis. 30 points, 23 rebounds. LeBron at 22 and 11. And the Lakers go on and win the first game of this series with game two coming up tomorrow night in San Francisco. You see there on the Western Conference already Denver won the first two games of that series. Game three is like two weeks from now. <laughs> they spread these things out so much uh, for television. Uh, I don't think game three is not till Friday, I think, with the Nuggets and the, yeah, Nuggets and the Suns don't play again till Friday. They played Monday. They don't play again till Friday. That's why this thing goes to the middle of June. But uh, monster win last night there for the Lakers. Big show coming up for you here today. Just a few minutes, Drew Trafton will join us to recap uh, what his Seahawks did at the NFL draft. Get his thoughts about that. Coming up at 10 o'clock, Dick Bramer, of course, will join us. It is Wednesday. He'll join us from Chicago after that tough loss for the Twins last night. Game two of the series coming up, and we'll discuss the injuries that are now hitting the Twins pitching staff with both uh, Maeda and Malley out for Minnesota. As I mentioned, at 1035, Paul Sather will be back with us, UND men's basketball coach, as they have, I wouldn't say blown up this roster, but they've certainly added to it. With the additions of Eli King and Tyree Iannaccio, the Summit League Freshman of the Year in 2021 in Grand Forks, went into the transfer portal, played the last two years at James Madison, and now coming back to UND. That's a unique story. We're going to visit with Paul coming up at 1035. That and a heck of a lot more, including you'll hear from Jason Light, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers general manager, on the selection of Cody Malk. Well, that's coming up as well. We'll take a break. Hot Mike is off and rolling on this Wednesday on WDAY Extra, KSFL in Sioux Falls and Inforum.com. We're back after this. Our crews break down every angle of the biggest stories. WDAY News. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Cody Mouth. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers take Cody Mount from North Dakota State and Hankinson, North Dakota. Now that it's over and done with, what's the reaction? What's the feeling? Ready to freaking play football again. <laughs> now I'm just excited to just go down to Tampa Bay and actually play some football. Count on the news leader, WDAY News. Hi, I'm Robin Hubner. Help create a world free of multiple sclerosis at the Dakota Medical Foundation Little Black Dress and Tie Evening Gala, Friday, May 5th at the Moorhead Armory Event Center. Enjoy a meal, cocktails, live auction, local music, and a speaker affected by MS. Proceeds help drive critical research. Black dress and tie are optional. Reservations are required. 
Scan this QR code or visit DMF Little Black Dress and Tie for MS betterworld.org. Somebody has to stand up for victims. Detective Stabler, my partner, Detective Benson. It took a lot of courage to get up on that stand. She's not going to ever be able to hurt you again. I promise you, I'll protect you. Weekdays at 12 p.m. You took my father. Somebody's going to pay for this. There's no story more surprising than a real-life Dateline mystery. That was a pretty ugly crime scene. Follow every twist and turn five times a week. The chase is on. With Dateline. Weekdays at 1 p.m. In this job, you take your eye off it for one sec. People can die. Don't think. Just do it. I'm a firefighter, and I will always be a firefighter. You did a great thing to do. It's all because of you. Weekdays at 7 p.m. and 12.05 a.m. 911, what is your emergency? Every day we encounter people who are having the worst day of their entire lives. Does it get any easier? Nope. It takes a certain kind of person to run towards danger rather than run away from it. Why is this job so important to you? Growing up, I never saw any heroes who looked like me. And that's what a hero looks like. Help is on the way. Sundays at 8 p.m. I'm Tyne Morgan, host of U.S. Farm Report. Join me right here each weekend as we explore the news and issues that matter most to agriculture. We know each year farmers and ranchers are thrown challenges, but as agriculture continues to adapt, we are right there with you. From markets to weather, we take a deep dive into what matters most to agriculture and rural America. Saturdays at 6 a.m. Today, one in five working age Americans has a mental health condition. People in all types of jobs and at all levels. And the key to helping us succeed is a supportive and inclusive workplace. All of us have a role to play in making that happen. So what can I do to help? As a CEO, I can set the tone for supportive culture. As a manager, I can offer assistance and accommodations. As a coworker, I can listen and be a source of support to my colleagues. As someone with a mental health condition, I can ask for what I need to perform my best. I can offer all employees the supports they need to deliver on the job, for the team and for the business. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I can remind others that we all benefit from workplaces that promote good mental health. Mental health friendly workplaces are more important than ever and all of us have a role to play in promoting them. Learn more at whatcanyoudocampaign.org. The biggest Seahawks, Sounders, and Mariners fan in the FM area. It's time for Views with Drew. It is Wednesday at 920-ish. As Drew Trafton joins us each and every Wednesday for our audience in Sioux Falls. Yeah, you can hey. say hello. I don't know how, hello, big you are, how big you are in South Dakota. Yeah, probably uh, ish is probably a pretty good <laughs> descriptor there, too. Uh, as the intro says, you are a huge Seattle Rube. Yes. Uh, are, are you, is it time to hop on the Kraken bandwagon? Yeah, I mean. They beat the Stanley Cup champions yeah. in seven games in seven on the games road. And, they, and then they and then last, last night, night, magic in overtime. Uh, one heck of a shot. I don't even know what you call that shot. but it, it We was, got it here. This yeah. is now, for people so that were watching, they, the went, up, they went up 4-2 in this game. There were yeah. six goals in the first period in this game, which yeah. is outrageous. Morehead's Will Borgen scored again. I had an assist last night. In this game, by the way, why couldn't the Wild beat Jake Ottinger like this? I, I just just drives me crazy. Well, that was the key. To Here's the, series, the overtime right? winner, though. It literally the cameraman lost it. Yeah. It was just a turnaround shot and the, goes in. Watch this is again. a much better angle of it. It's it's kind of bonkers. Right, how like, it, it, Gordy gets his stick yeah. out of it now and then Whoop. just fires into the net. It goes in. Yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> yeah. Dave Hackstall gets, you know, a former UND yeah. coach. He's, he's, he's got this team working. How about and this? They were, uh, they were pretty much hot garbage last year, you know, with their, with their expansion inaugural Expansion team, year. expansion. It's not yeah. going to go probably you know, very I, well. I think Vegas set an unrealistic, you know, bar. No for, You know, that. like with, with recency bias. But then this team comes out, you know, I this team was supported really well that first year. And 
then they rewarded the fans this year. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think no matter what they do at this point, I Holy think, cow. you know, even if, even if Dallas, you know, you know, rails off four wins here and, and eliminates them, um, which I'm not saying is going to yeah. happen. Uh, not that I know a thing about hockey, <laughs> but I know momentum matters for something. And goaltending and, uh, matters as yeah. well. And the Kraken yeah. are getting that right they're, now. They're getting that in spades. And uh, it, it seems like uh, that town is, is, really that's backing the, that team right up. and that's the thing yeah. like i knew we talked about this when they got the franchise yeah that this was going to be a thing mm-hmm. just because seattle supports everything yes. that they do there whether it's the mariners the seahawks yeah. to the sounders, the sounders are a they still have deal there. there's still a huge supersonic fan base yes. there and they haven't yeah. played basketball there in in 20 years yeah i mean they've had people clamoring making documentaries just it's so just you constant. Knew, so you knew when the nhl was eventually going to yeah. go there it was going to be a thing it's going to holy pop. cow and that town's fans reward very little i mean like it doesn't take much success for the town to, to well, kind of fully last embrace summer. it look at what the mariners yeah, exactly. who had not made the playoffs yeah. in 20 years yeah. and they got unbelievably hot after the all-star break that yeah. place was rocking yes. every single home game yeah and, and, it, was, and it carried through it, it's not, carried through a little bit it'd be fun to see if they are yeah. they now they stole one so yeah that's all you got to do hey all you yeah. got to do now is win your three games in home ice and you're moving to the conference yeah. final which they struggled to do against colorado <laughs> They, you know what though? They won games they, on. They won two they games it. in Denver. Yeah, they That's got the it. Crazy and, and that that was you know like, yeah, it's when fun. And their leading scorer is out. Their leading scorer got concussed. Yes, by Cal McCarr, who's the maybe the best defenseman in the game. He's not playing right now. That's yeah. the other crazy part about this. Yeah, they're manufacturing some some good production. Listen to you. You don't know anything. About I, well, I don't. But no, you know no, what but, you're talking about. Well, played video fun games stuff, here right? and there. You know, fun for me because that that's like how a lot of people feel about soccer, you know, where they're like, I don't get soccer. I don't understand it. I can't watch it. I didn't grow up with hockey. So I'm trying to like, I've, since I've moved here, I've really tried to make concerted efforts every season to get into it. And it's just, it's tough because it's like, when you don't know it growing up, you don't have that same passion for it. Like I can get up for the Stanley cup playoffs because who can't, right? Like you watch that. And it's it's like the best postseason. Just like the athletic, ability out there and the stress and the strain that those guys put their bodies through it is like just you have to respect it you know you have to be amazed by it the pace of play right. all of it it's just so like the drama yep. of it is just great and so like i can get on board with that but i just i have to like kind of bridge that gap somehow and, and like just kind of fall in love with all it. right well if they win this you yeah. better get on board because yeah. it could be seattle las vegas yeah. to go to the stanley cup final <laughs> Imagine that That'd for the be, NHL, yeah. the two newest teams in the Western play, Conference. Right. Or yeah, Give me here, a break. here we go. Holy cow! I do have Kraken gear. Though. I know you I've, do. I've got, yeah. I've got a hat. Yeah. I've got a shirt. Yeah. I've got. So we're good. <laughs> we're, I'm ready. I'm ready to jump on. All right, your beloved Seahawks draft yeah. class. What do you make of uh, what we 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 had you on Friday after yeah. the two picks that they had. What do we make overall of what was, uh, Schneider and Carroll did here? I like it. Yeah. Uh, very different than I thought. Like, if, if I were to have stacked up their team needs by, like, you know, by priority, yeah. I think you could have almost, like, flipped it, and that's how they drafted <laughs> on down. But I think there's a philosophy there of, you know, like, we're going to take our good positions, and we're going to get great at those spots. You know I mean? And there's, there's something to be said. They locked down several of their position groups for the next – Four years, really. I mean, wide receiver so now. They, they got, went corner wide receiver yeah. in the first round. Okay, so corner with Devin Witherspoon, you're, you're pairing him with Tariq Woolen, yep. right? Tariq Woolen's got three years left on his deal. Witherspoon's going to have five, you know, on, on right. his if they pick up the option yep. there. You know, their their next pick in the first round is Jackson Smith and Jigba. You know, you pair him with, with DK Metcalf. And, and Tyler I'm not, Lockett. Yeah, I'm not done with Tyler Lockett. I think no. he's still there's some tread on the tires for him. For sure. You know? And I think, you know, their plan there is he's going to be their slot guy. He's yeah. going to be their number three this year. But, you know, Tyler Lockett's 31. And so by by the time Jackson Smith and Jigba's first contract's up, you know, he could be their number yeah, one. Right. You know, yeah. but you've got him and DK and you don't have to worry about that as much anymore. You know, and and, and so they they locked down those two yeah. two rooms there, which is great. And, you know, they made some other moves, too, where, where they solidified some parts of their roster, which I think is good. Like, I, I don't know where they're going to stack up in the NFC this year. I could see them being, a, a like, a legitimate threat in the NFC because a lot of the moves they, they made in the draft. They did address No. Were you surprised by that? Not really because yeah. they re-signed Drew Locke um, in the offseason as well as yeah. Geno Smith. 
And so I think they they feel good about that. And, you know, you look at, like, Will Levis, you look at um, uh, Hendon Hooker. They're the same age as Drew Locke. Right. You know? Which is kind of crazy, so by yeah. the way. So it's it's like, okay, I, I can see what they're doing there. Um, and I think they do believe in Geno Smith. I, I really do. Coming off the year he had, why wouldn't you? You know? Yeah. I mean, Geno was really, really good last year. Yeah. There's no there's no arguing that whatsoever. Right. He was good. And then in their, you know, Saturday, the, the deeper rounds, they really, you know, filled out their trenches a little bit. But they picked guys who had, like, one really good skill. You know, like, speed was was the thing. And I think that's going to match up well against San Francisco. Bill Barmo writes on ESPN about what we were just talking about. that The, the use of the me. pick on cornerback Devin Witherspoon. Doing so increases the chances Geno Smith will be the team's starting quarterback in 2024. Yeah. Yeah, because they don't have the guy in the building now, yeah. you know. So they really are. You know, they, they signed <laughs> into a three-year deal. Listen to this. This is fantastic about the wide receiver selection of, of Smith and Jigba. Um for a guy whose top receiver with, for the Jets was once Jeremy Curley, Smith is spoiled for choice in Seattle. That is very yeah. accurate. He's got Gino options. was Gino was so hosed in New York. Jet fans yeah. just and I'm I was on it, but look who he was throwing the ball to. He right. had nobody to throw yeah. the ball to well, in New York. And then they added in the third round of this draft, they added Zach Charbonnet yes. from UCLA, yep. you know, yep. and and he could be an every down back, but he can catch too, you know? And so they've got Ken Walker and Zach Charbonnet and they're, they're giving him weapons. What that, do you make of what sure. the Vikes sure. did taking Jaron Hall in the sixth round? What, yeah. are they, what are we, what are they doing at quarterback? That was interesting. It, uh, I, yeah, uh, I, I, I wonder if Kirk's not back next year. I'm on that. Right. I said that I don't think he's the quarterback in 2024. And, and this draft class that's coming up, like I haven't watched like, Drake May film. Well, they always say this. I mean, Caleb but, Williams is the Heisman yeah. winner from USC, and Drake May are supposed to be one, two. Penix from Washington's right. really, really good. I mean, there are there, but they're that, guys. They, but they always say this, class. you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, next year's class is going to be unbelievable compared to this one. Right. But, yeah. You know, this one was supposed to be as good Pretty as good. 2021. Right. You know? Yeah. So, so it, it'll be interesting to see how that narrative changes. But it, it seems like. There are a couple teams up there that are going to have insane draft capital, like Arizona. The Cardinals you're, made you're out just, like a bandit. You like, know? if they want to move on from Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray is going to be able to be had, you know, for sure. So they're 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 going to have avenues, you know, like there are going to be guys on the move potentially too. Who's their quarterback in twenty twenty four? The Vikings. Yes. Um, I would love. I'd like to see Trey Lance get a shot. <laughs> you know, like you know that'd be kind of fun. Um, yeah, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I I I don't know. I, I honestly do that's not the part know. That's just befuddling me. Like, but who are they gonna? What I are they gonna do there? You. I don't think it's. Kirk I don't Cousins. think it's Kirk Cousins. No, I think they're. Yeah. They've said, well, all right. Thank you for your service, yeah. and here's your gold watch, and we're moving you know, on. And you know, kind of like what we saw with Lamar Jackson, there are gonna be some guys like the Joe Burrows of the world who are gonna need new de- deals. Yeah. And, you know, with team building these days, you, you look at some of these teams, and they might not want to sign that mega deal with a quarterback, and maybe. The Vikings can move in there. Maybe they're looking at it like, hey, we're super flexible now because if there's the guy that we want on free agency, we can go and pursue that guy. Yeah. If we want to sell the farm in our three next drafts to go get the guy who's a rookie quarterback, <laughs> let's do that. Look at the quarterbacks of the NFC North probably in 2024. 24, not yeah, this year, right. 24. Jordan Love's going to be the guy in Green Bay. Yeah, it we, seems like We it. expect Justin Fields in Chicago. Just keep developing. Not sure about the Lions. They didn't we don't know beyond, guy. Right, I mean, well, beyond Jared Goff. Yeah. yeah. And the Vikings still have a question mark. That, to me, is really yeah. odd, you know, in this era where you know if you don't have an elite player or an above-average player at that position, you are not going to contend Right. I don't know what your I don't know what their yeah. plan is here. You have to do I more really than don't. more than hold serve in the NFL, and right? Anymore. You're either looking you for him or you're, you're especially you O'Connell's a, an offensive yeah. wizardry that and they drafted a wide receiver in the first yeah. round that to to go with a guy I don't think Jaron Hall is the long term solution. Maybe I'm off on this. Granted, my prediction of a of this weekend I said that Zadarius Smith, Dalvin Cook would not be on the Viking roster, and Trey Lance would not be a 49er. I yeah. was 0 for 3. Well, I, I missed on all of them. The, trade, the trading was weird, you know, because there's yeah. so many reports out there of different teams that wanted to make moves, and then they couldn't find a dancing partner. And the only one that did make moves was Philly. Yeah. And they got better. And they, they got yes. DeAndre Swift from the from the Lions. Yeah. I mean, they, come on. Yeah. The, the two moves they made in the first round alone, yeah. like, just it, to me in the NFC this year, it feels like if the Eagles stay healthy... You know, just, just right. pencil them in. I got know, a, for the Super Bowl. An email in, Dom, are you booking your first class tickets now? The 
Adam Schefter reporting that the uh, Randall Cobb is signing with the right. Jets. <laughs> Rogers Literally, the... everybody on that list that he made. Rogers the Cobb. They, yeah, they've they've done everybody it. that he wanted. They went and got outside yeah. of OBJ. They literally went. They got Alan Lazard. They got Cobb. I mean, I don't know. Well, DeAndre <laughs> Hopkins. You know, he could. God, I don't know. I. It's no. it's just hilarious. I'm watching the Knicks game last night. I got home. I was out for a little bit. I wa- flipped the Knicks game on because I, I invariably I I want the Knicks to do well, even though they've really been irrelevant for 20 years. And there in the front row is Aaron yeah. Rodgers and Sauce Gardner's. I'm like literally, like he's just literally gonna going rub to, this in in Green Bay's face. He's going to practice. It's hysterical. They're, they're posting videos of him I, throwing dimes I, to Garrett I, Wilson yeah. against. Air and, defenders. And the Jets are tweeting this video out. It's just like, oh my gosh! It's like, I don't. Is this the revenge? Is he really going to do this? Well, I mean, the dude. We know he plays well with a chip on his shoulder, but it's also in the AFC. Yeah. And there's still Joe Burrow there. There's Josh Allen there. There's a guy named Mahomes hey, that's still there. That could be his ultimate cherry on top oh if, he, if he pulls it off. We talked about this when we did the draft show on yeah. on Thursday. The Jets' schedule is tough. Yeah, it's a slobber It's not going to be easy. But the AFC, like that whole conference, like yeah. you said, that's about as stacked as a conference can possibly get. You know in, what? In terms of as talent. long as the Patriots finish last in that division, I'm A-OK. It's After a, years of that, they can finish last. That's well, A-OK. Be it. careful what you wish for, because if they fall too far, oh, Caleb God. Williams is sitting right there. <laughs> Do you have any confidence that Belichick can actually draft a quarterback not in the sixth round named uh, Tom Brady? Because right. I don't. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Who knows what he would do if he had that sort of oh, leverage. God. You got to go roll on, uh, you got to go do the news. So yeah, thanks for coming by. Do, the biggest Kraken fan we know, Drew yeah, Traft is stopping by. <laughs> I was for, with him from the beginning. I, you okay? were. And from honestly, the beginning. For, for our it's new been a viewers, long haul. Drew actually picked the nickname as well. Remember, yeah. we heard the rumors of what the nickname yeah. was going to be. There's you a got, lot of momentum You got that, that one. So. Not my choice, but it's grown on me. It's all right. It's yeah. pretty good. Thanks for coming by, bud. Thanks for having me. Drew Traft enjoys us each and every Wednesday at 920. We'll take a break. We come back. Tampa Bay Buccaneers GM Jason Light on why they picked Cody Mouth where they did. You'll want to hear that when Hot Mike returns on a Wednesday. We're back after this. On the next Tamron Hall. As actors, they've collaborated on some of the hottest TV shows on TV, but it's Dulé Hill and Jasmine Simon's collaboration off screen as parents that inspired their latest project, a new children's book called Repeat After Me. Plus, Dulé reveals the latest on season two of the Wonder Years revival. Then she's the queen of children's music. Lori Berkner performs for the youngest members of the Tam Fam. On the next Tamron Hall. There are places, people, and conditions in this world that almost seem beyond hope. But not when Mercy Ships is there. Mercy Ships is a place restoring sight to the blind, Normalcy to the deformed. Beauty and happiness to the outcast. And joy to the brokenhearted. And many times you can almost see the life coming back into them. (laughs) Can't be that. Mercy Ships is the largest floating civilian hospital in the world. Staffed with some of the most skilled volunteer medical professionals and crew. Mercy Ships is the reason why hope is now in sight for those who need it most. To learn more, go to mercyships.org today. Love me tender, love me sweet, never let me go. You have made my life complete and I love you so love me tender love me dear tell me you are
It's been said that when someone you love has Parkinson's, you have Parkinson's. The truth is, Parkinson's disease doesn't just affect the diagnosed. It affects everyone who supports and helps care for them. Worldwide, over 10 million people are living with Parkinson's, a neurological disease that affects movement. And with so many places to search for information, it can be difficult to know where to begin. The Parkinson's Foundation has answers. Answers for everyone in the fight. We can help you understand the disease, help you find expert care, give you tips for living a better life, share the latest research, help you find local support, and there's a free helpline you can call. Find your answers and join us in the fight against Parkinson's. To learn more, please go to parkinson.org or call 1-800-4PD-INFO. The Parkinson's Foundation. Better, Better lives together. Welcome back, everybody, on a Wednesday morning edition of Hot Mike, WDAY Extra, Inforum.com, KSFL at Sioux Falls. We say good morning to everybody there watching. Dick Bramer coming up in our second hour. He joins us each and every Wednesday. Today, from Chicago, as the Twins will play game two of their set against the White Sox. I wanted to make sure we got these uh, these comments in from uh, over the weekend. Obviously, the story that's still got a ton of momentum around here on Cody Malk being uh, selected in the second round of the NFL draft by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you missed, by the way, if had people ask me if you uh, want to watch our the, the special we did, it is available at Inforum.com in its entirety. You can watch it there from uh, before the pick, when the pick was made, to after it. It's, uh, it's quite some uh, television fun, let's say, uh, is the best way to describe it. Um, the Bucks GM is Jason Light. He was one of the architects to get Tom Brady to come to Tampa few years ago, of course, that led them to the Super Bowl championship. Uh, this is his uh, post-draft uh, press conference. Wanted to play a couple of comments here about the selection of Cody Mauk. See him as a guard. See him an interior player. Start him off at guard. And, um, you know, he's at the Senior Bowl, played some center, played some guard, played some right tackle, played left tackle there. He's played up and down the line. Uh, did a really good job at all of them. But right now we see him as a guard. But as you know, we love guys that, I mean, we're not the only team, but love guys that can play them all. So we'll see how he fits in. Absolutely love it. Uh, Jensen's been texting ever since we <laughs> took him. He, goes, he and I are going to mess some things up. He didn't use the word mess. Um, so it's, really it's, it's a, oh, yeah. He's, it's, if you could somehow clone Jensen and Coke Keefe together, you get <laughs> Cody Mock. So it's, yeah, no, it's great. I mean, who doesn't like that? You know, I talked about it the other day, offensive line, the guys that you have fun watching. It just so happened we were watching him um, together for the 18th time. But, um, and he was one that we have a lot of fun watching. His extracurricular activity after the, when the whistle's still echoing, um, his, uh, just his pure passion for the game, um, his athleticism is really, really underrated. He's a great athlete, really quick, really flexible, great bend. Um, you see him when he's going for a little shot at the end, how he quickly he gets up. Uh, he's, uh, no, he's, he's a great athlete. He's, I mean, he's got a great puller. He's great in space. Um, he's going to have to get a little stronger like all offensive linemen, um, coming, especially coming from you know, a smaller school. I think he was the first non-Power 5 player taken. But... Um, we, we don't see that as a limitation. We just think it's going to make him better as, as he gets, you know, as we pull him along. North Dakota State runs the heck out of the ball. He's probably more advanced as a run blocker right now. How much room does he have to grow, does he need to grow, as, as a pass protector at this level? Yeah, well, I think he's, yeah, I think they yeah, obviously has room to grow. I mean, he'll even tell you that. So he's a, he's a fast learner, though, and he's, uh, he's a real willing, all three of these guys, um, to put in extra work. So when you have that, those traits usually comes around a little quicker, especially for a very intelligent guy like he is. There's Jason Light. That's the general manager of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the selection of, of Cody Mauk. Uh, there's an account out there. I don't know if this is confirmed. That's NFL jersey numbers that has out there. It says that uh, Cody's going to wear number 69 with Tampa Bay. Uh, that has not been confirmed yet, so I don't know if I want to 
go and tell everybody that, but at least that's one Twitter account that's uh, that's reporting that. The Bucks mini camp, rookie mini camp, is coming up here uh, over the next little bit, and he'll get his first uh, time out of the field, all that kind of good stuff, and meet uh, the Tampa media, which I know that's what he was talking to us about when uh, after the pick was made on on Friday night, and already there is there is significant buzz that you normally don't associate with an FCS player taken in the second round of the NFL draft, but you heard Light say it. He was the first non-Power 5 player selected in the draft. That was that was Cody um, with the 48th overall pick, and there are certain expectations that come with that uh, selection. And you heard, I mean, him and Ryan Jensen are going to, I think, be best friends as soon as he gets there. Jensen, another um, small school guy that, a place center for Tampa that, again, that was a guy handpicked by Tom Brady to come back out of retirement and come play football. And now he's got this guy uh, potentially next to him or at least around him that uh, that could certainly <laughs> help out on, on that. So it, it's just, it's fascinating to me covering this whole process leading up and then to see the, explosion on this over the last couple days is been fast fascinating is the word to use I had people I know I know that don't watch football that have come up to me over the last couple days and this isn't a brag about what we uh what we did say hey I watched your show that was awesome that was that was such a neat deal to see the community come out like that that, that it is it has had more reaction to this than um, some of the state tournaments we've done. I'm not lying. I mean, I've been here for everything we've done on the state tournament stuff going back to 2013. And we've had visceral reaction to some buzzer beaters or stuff like that. This has uh, eclipsed that. It really has, I think, for the the magnitude of what it was, the amount of people that were there, uh, and the amount of tension, I guess, honestly, statewide that it's garnered. Um, it's going to be a thing. And I you know, we mentioned this last week on the the Carson Wentz, you know, blazing the path on this, that how much a deal that was in, in 2016 when, when Carson was selected with the second overall pick. I have to remind everybody, it was the second overall pick in the draft that he went and how much that had taken over. And it was, you know, if you want to say it was a Bismarck and a Fargo thing, I'll give you that, but I think there were quite a bit of parts of the state that were on board. This was a different deal. I have a guy from class B town to do this. That's the photo. <laughs> and Jensen didn't miss an opportunity there. Uh, and they Photoshopped the Cody Mauk photo in there. That's just fantastic. That's the one that's been uh, all over. Uh, it started all over social media about 10 o'clock Friday night and has exploded over the last couple of days. And he's going to a spot like we talked about on Friday night during the draft show. Um, that they've got some question marks. That's a team still that is it Baker Mayfield or Kyle Trask that's going to be their guy under center when they start the season in the second week of September. That is up for debate about how they're going to go forward there. But uh, to see that explosion, that kind of uh, intensity around him, not just here, but I think also down in in Tampa and South Florida, boy, that's that's something else. For people that are asking, by the way, on his um, his salary for, at least for this year. This isn't his f- full contract. Base salary be about $750,000 for, for this year. I'm not talking the full deal. Signing bonus about $610,000. His cap hit will be about $1.3 million. That's not his total deal. I know if people are looking this up because you can do this now, that's the cap hit for this year. Um, that's not his total deal. Again, a second round pick, pick where he was, and I'll just go back here. We'll look at, I know Christian's not the, uh, comparable because, uh, of where he was picked, but it wasn't, it was what it was 14 picks more. Um, let's just click on that quick and we can get the info. Yeah. So, so. Watson signed a four-year, $9.2 million contract, right? 
His base salary this past season was $705,000. Goes up this year to one point one, And then goes to one point five, and then one point nine in his final year of 2025. That's probably in the same boat of what uh, Cody's going to get. Signing bonus obviously was pretty good. That it'll be... Yeah, Watson's signing bonus was 3.9. So I'd say Cody's probably in that 2.5. Just all these things are slotted. That's where you could tell that. And if I maybe if we have a break here, I'll go and look at the what the 48th pick last year in the draft got uh, paid. That's probably a good barometer to get set for people asking me about uh, what Cody's going to get uh, paid. So we'll do that. Also, we now know, we'll take a break here. We wrap up our one. The college football playoff has fixed its dates for the expanded tournament. And for you FCS fans, it may mean, I don't know where you're going to find your games in a couple years. We'll do that when we wrap up our one of Hot Mike on a Wednesday morning. We're back after this. Saving money. Happy Harry's Penny Sale is on now through May 17th, 2023. Sale starts April 20th, giving you four weeks to save on over 200 wines from around the world. And now, no pennies needed. Just one low price on all selected wines. Visit our website and click on the Penny Sale logo to see the full list of wines on sale. We hope you enjoy this more relaxed format, giving you more time to shop. Please use our products in moderation. Touchmark is a place where you can really be yourself. It's a complete family atmosphere from the residents to the team members to the community. There is just such a homey feeling here. The energy and the positivity, I think, is what's really important. You come in, you feel like you're part of a family. You're building a relationship. You're building friendships. We feel very blessed to be here at Touchmark. It's incredibly important to create that family atmosphere, which is what Touchmark really values. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in North Dakota. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the NDHSAA. News happens at all hours of the day and night. Stories develop and situations change in the blink of an eye. In our community, knowing where you can turn at any time of the day for clear information and facts is more important today than at any other time. That's why we start our day in the middle of the night to gather new information and be ready to bring it to you. Tracking what has changed overnight and how that will impact your day today. We're here for you with the most up-to-date news and weather to get you on your way because your community is our community. Overcoming drug addiction was difficult, but I found the path to recovery that worked for me. Treatment helped me come to terms with the issues in my life that caused me to use drugs. And I found better ways to cope. Learning I had a substance use disorder helped me realize I needed to make a change. The road to recovery is different for everyone. There were good days and bad days. But I found strength in seeking help. My friends and family made a huge difference in my recovery. I never gave up. I found my path and I keep walking it every day. Find the path that works for you. Learn more at cdc.gov slash stop overdose. There is a road laid out for me. Boxes everywhere. And this is going to be Addie's room. I am blind, you're really going to like it. I hope so. Yeah. I know this road is there for me. There is a love way. First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> way down. I got this. Okay. If I'm really free, take me down to the river and wash me.
Welcome back, everybody. Hot Mike rolls on here on a Wednesday. Dick Kramer coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, so just did a little research here. The pick last year was Jaquan Brisker went with the 48th overall pick, a safety to the Bears last year. He signed a four-year, $7.35 million contract, signing bonus of $2.5 million. That's the slotted spot. I would, Cody's going to be right in that area. I mean, again, we, we talked about this last week during the show. Like, literally, you don't often see people become multimillionaires right in front of your eyes, and that's exactly what happened last week in Hankinson. That was cool stuff. So, in that ballpark, for people wanting to know, because I know people are interested in that stuff, and you can find this everywhere now, that's the uh, the likely contract there. Last thing before we wrap up our first hour, story we've been following for a bit, because it is... I. A, I find it interesting. B, it's going to be, I think, the biggest thing to hit football in a long, long time is the expansion of the college football playoff. This is the last year of four, thankfully, uh, here in 2023. The 2024 season, they go from four to 12. Yesterday, the uh, the dates were finalized for the first two years of the playoff. And how it connects here, it's a little bit of a winding road, but I'll, I'll try and make it as succinct as I can. The... Remember, they're going to play four first-round games on campus. Then the quarterfinal games are going to be played at the bowl sites, semifinals at two more bowl locations, and the championship at you know a predetermined spot. Normally, it's going to be a warm-weather spot, despite the fact that Minneapolis wanted to get in. So in 2024, the first-round games are going to be played in... December 20th and 21st. That's a Friday and a Saturday. Now, for people that don't know this, next football season, college football season, is a 12-game year for the FCS, meaning there's 12 Saturdays between Labor Day and Thanksgiving. Therefore, every five or six years, you can have a 12-game season, much like they did in 2019 was a 12-game year. 24 and 25 are going to be 12 game seasons in the FCS and the Bison are going to play 12 next year. Meaning the season starts August 31. I think it is long story longer. That is now the same weekend, December 20th and 21st as the FCS semifinals. And ESPN has the exclusive broadcast rights to the college football playoff. So for those of us that have, gotten used to having a FCS semifinal game on ESPN two. I think both games were on ESPN two this past year, the Bison game with incarnate word and the South Dakota state game with Montana state. I don't know how that happens. I don't know how that happens, especially because there's still going to be bowl games happen in them. I, I don't know where the FCS goes. That's part of the whole larger conversation that maybe sometime this, this month and maybe as we go forward, into discussing. I know I've asked ESPN to have Dan Margulis come back on the show, who uh, I know was a really popular guest when they announced that the FCS title game was moving to a Sunday for this past season. We're taught, we'd are we like to have him on again to see how all this is going to... I know he's busy on this stuff because they're trying to figure out exactly what channel is going to carry what. But it's... Remember, the, the full NCAA contract with all the other sports, the women's basketball tournament, the College World Series, the FCS tournament, the Women's Softball World Series, NCAA Volleyball Tournament. All of those are under this one contract that expires this year. 23-24 is the last year of the deal. And then it goes up. And there's a lot of talk that the Women's Basketball Tournament is going to go on its own, and it should. I think it was already being undervalued by $100 million. And you saw the, the ratings for the championship game. That's only that's going to get its own deal. But for if you're FCS football, if you're college lacrosse, if you're volleyball, if you're softball and baseball, do you want to not be on ESPN? I don't that that's worked out well. And for you FCS fans, well, let's go to Fox. We can get, you know, we can get no. You're not going to get on Fox Sports 1. I'm going to tell you that right now. And you know why? Because they just signed a deal with the Big 10. For basketball, and NBC did too. 
they're going to put their basketball games on before they put FCS football on. Okay? I think we, we, we don't need to be naive about that. So if it's ESPN and it might be ESPN Plus only, that might be the better route to go. Something we're getting, When we have more time, I want to get into it, but at least for people to start processing that, both here in Fargo, Sioux Falls, Brookings, wherever you watch that, I'd start getting on board with that, that this the tournament may not look exactly how it has over the last decade plus. We'll break. We come back. Dick Bramer will join us from Chicago. Twins are hurting after last night's loss. Get ready for game two of their set with the White Sox. Hour two of Hot Mike on a Wednesday morning. We'll begin right after this. What you've heard about Harry's Steakhouse in downtown Grand Forks is true. A classic steakhouse, serving perfectly prepared steaks, seafood, and more. And what's a great steakhouse without great cocktails and wines? Enjoy a step back in time where everything old is new again. See you at Harry's Steakhouse in downtown Grand Forks. Reservations recommended. Next ET. The stars come out to play on ET. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Sweet. See that? Let me show you how it's going. Oh, oh. Oh. Just roll with it, you know? <laughs> I just love being on ET. Let's go! <laughs> Celeb guest host. Work. 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 Wow! Every night of the week. <laughs> only on ET. Weekdays at 6.30 on WDAY WDAZ. Plains Art Museum invites you to open your mind and embrace the unknown at our annual Spring Gala Wonderland. Join us on Saturday, May 6th for an evening of wonderment and delight, including an art auction featuring more than 100 local, regional, and national artists. Music by Mae Simpson and Star 4. Hors d'oeuvres by Chef's Table and Urban Foods Catering. Delicious desserts from Nicole's Fine Pastry and Cafe. And a wine tasting with Happy Harry's Bottle Shops. Tickets are available now at plainsart.org. Catch Bison Softball on WDAY Extra. Watch NDSU take on the Omaha Mavericks in a doubleheader starting Friday at noon. Bison Softball only on WDAY Extra. Ever hear the one about the frog? Put a frog in a pot of boiling water and it'll jump right out. But put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly heat it up and that frog will boil. It's alive. But as a metaphor for us and all that we go through as veterans, it's usually real-world experience. It's a story that rings true. We make excuses for how we feel. We push everything down. We tell ourselves the lie that it's easier to stay in that boiling water, to disconnect. And some days, maybe, it is. But you've never been interested in easy. Reaching out is hard. Do it anyway. You're not alone. You've got this. You are not a frog. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. Do you want to meet a family with a transgender kid? Here we are. Max loves to do backflips. Max loves to play his ukulele. Max loves to just be a kid and just be himself. When I found out I was pregnant, all I really wanted was a happy, healthy, whole child. And that's what I got. I think it's really important for people to know that trans kids don't have a political agenda. They are just kids. Like any parent, we love our kids unconditionally and we will never stop fighting for them. Stand with us. Protect our families. Come on, babe, let's go outside and take the boat out for a ride. I'm ready, I don't want to wait. Get on board. Got the sunshine and the short line. It's a good time. Listen up, people. Going extinct is a bad thing. At least we had an asteroid. What's your excuse? You're headed for a climate disaster. And yet every year, governments spend hundreds of billions of public funds on fossil fuel subsidies. As you rebuild your economies and bounce back from this pandemic, this is humanity's big chance. Don't choose extinction. Save your species before it's too late. It's time for you humans to stop making excuses and start making changes.
This is Hot Mike. Hot Mike. On the networks of WDAY. WDAY. Here's Dom Izzo. A drive to left field. He has done it again. And a leaping catch on the warning track. Got it. And the Twins complete the sweep. It is Wednesday at 10 o'clock-ish, which means we are joined by the voice of the Minnesota Twins, Dick Braber uh, from Valley Sports North, in location in Chicago after the Twins lost last night. Uh, to the White Sox, they'll play game two of their set coming up uh, tonight as they'll send uh, Louis Varland to the mound as the Twins have had to make some adjustments to their pitching staff, which we'll get to in a second. That The game last night, you know, it hurts, but it's kind of one of those games where, it, depending on how this division or whatever race shakes out, that if it's tight, you look you look back and like, boy, that's a game in May you hate to drop, especially if it ends up being tight in September and early October. Well, but then you have to remember the Twins took two out of three against the White Sox at home, and they were all close ball games too. The four games they played against each other have been decided by a total of five runs. So, uh, you know, in the end, you don't remember how close the games were, just whether your team won yeah. or lost, right? But, uh, you know, the Twins have, have, even in their losses, they've they've been like one hit away from you know pulling out a win and it's it's been a reminder not that we needed them but it's been a reminder what a fine line there is in baseball between a win and a loss <laughs> most of the time you're going to have a blowout game here or there but you know hey if Ben Intendi doesn't make a great catch in the first inning the yeah. Twins win that game in regulation nobody made a great play yeah. so uh yeah it's you know it's no fun to lose one run ball games but it's a lot better than losing 11 to 3 what uh now that you've seen them up close, why are the White Sox so bad? I don't know. Yeah. They, for most of my tenure <laughs> with the Twins, they have more than any other baseball team in my mind been more uh, more of an underachieving yeah. team than any other franchise. And I don't know why that is. You know, they they, they last year they thought it was the manager, so they fired him. Um, they've got some very talented players on the team and the twins are going to run into some really good pitching in this series, starting pitching, but they have underachieved. The starters have Kopech looked really good last mm -hmm. night. You know, Dylan cease almost threw a no hitter against the twins last year. He's got really good stuff. It's hard to figure out what the problem is. I, there are people who were paid to try to figure it out <laughs> and can't from a distance. I'm not even going to try, but it's just been, you know, they won the world series in 2005, but beyond that, even when they've gotten to the playoffs, they've been like the twins. They've quickly bounced out of the playoffs. It's been hard to figure out what the problem is. Yeah. It's just, they, they, they're too much talent for them to be this bad. I, I, I just, I don't know if they'll put it together or not, but it seems they, they, they're, I don't know if lazy is the right word, but they had a ground ball. Robert didn't run on a ground ball the other night. Now I know he got roundly criticized for that, but he said Larusa told him last year, if you're nursing an injury, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to necessarily go all, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I, it's hard to wrap my mind around this team. Even last night. Now the twins got their first run on a short fly ball. Now Luis Robert jr. Was not going to throw out Byron Buxton at the plate, yeah. but he caught the ball flat footed. You know, and you learn in little league, you don't do that. If you've got a base to throw to, you build some momentum after the catch. So you can, you know, put more oomph behind Correct. the throw, but he caught it flat footed through to the right base, third base. But it's like you, you see that and you go, well, do these guys really know the subtleties of the game? It's not too much to ask somebody to run hard for 90 <laughs> feet, right? And and it's just the optics have not been good. Yeah. They've got back-to-back walk-off wins, which they hope will get things turned around. But you have to – you have to – you use a good word. It, it looks lazy. Yeah. Whether it is or not, it just looks bad. Yeah. All right. So the home run celebrations have taken – the White Sox had a pretty good one. The, the, the vest, did you have a heads up on this before you saw it on camera on Sunday? No, and I kept, <laughs> yeah, I kept waiting. Okay, what are we going to do? You know, the White Sox have the mobster look. You know, and that's fine. <laughs> it's pretty good. It. It's a Chicago thing, yep. right? 
and 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 there's craziness all over and hey somebody hit a home run it's worth celebrating and having some fun with but our guys were just you know like it was 1963 shaking hands and going in the dugout right <laughs> well then they popped the fishing vest out you know with the little kids fishing pole and all that a ten, land of 10,000 rakes yeah. to the kind of a phrase for when you're you know hitting the ball well you're raking and so then i thought well given where they play their home games can we secondarily call them the Minneapolis Rakers? Wouldn't that be, <laughs> that wouldn't be bad, would it? Well, I'm watching the game Sunday, so I see Buxton hit the home run and the, and the whole thing. My son is is going to be four. He has a fishing pole, just like Byron Buxton was. I'm like, I, I pointed out to him, like, Jack, there's your fishing pole. Right. I, I was, <laughs> I was just, I was gobsmacked. I'm like, I can't believe this is actually, this is happening. That's, that's a neat deal. That's cool. It's a fun deal. Yeah. And my, I'd be stunned if when we get back from this road trip, uh, those vests aren't going to be oh. for sale in the Twins for road <laughs> shot. Right. And why well, anything to I make mean, a who's bet, not gonna, right? Who's not going to want one of those, right? <laughs> Land at 10,000 rakes. Any, anything to make a buck. I would think no doubt, <laughs> but, uh, absolutely. That's, that's the, that's a killer that could be in the in the Twins Pro Shop. Um, I we talked about this last week. I know it's probably gained a little bit more steam on on. I know uh, Lavelle Neal wrote something in the Star Tribune about Byron and when is this going to ha- is he going to play in the outfield? And I know you and I share this, but for some viewers that may have missed it last week, this is not the full Twins without him playing center field. Is there is there any update on that, or is he a DH until time is determined? Yeah, I, I would personally, I would be surprised if we see him in center field before the all-star break. We oh. don't see him in the outfield, uh, you know, shag and fly balls during batting practice. Byron takes his batting practice in the cages. He very rarely comes out and takes batting practice on the field. Uh, we don't see him on the field playing catch. Um, it makes you wonder whether we're going to see him in center field at all. But I, I really would be surprised mm. if he's out there before the All-Star break. And so much of that depends on the health of Michael A. Taylor. Now, the Twins aren't losing much of anything defensively out there. But again, last night, Nick Gordon pinch hit for Michael A. Taylor, the Twins center fielder. If Byron Buxton was playing center field, no one would be pinch hitting for him, right? So the 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 hope is and the goal is for him, Byron, to get 500 at bats. Right now, he's on a pace to get about 600 at bats. That the bottom line is that is good for the Minnesota Twins. Mm-hmm. You know, he he can do things offensively. Um, you know that not many people can do. When he got on base last night, he actually stole a base. That was really encouraging yeah. to me that he stole a base. So we'll wait and see how they play it out. But it's kind of hard. As much as we'd love to see him out there, it's hard to argue with the results. You know, yeah. he's got seven home runs. His batting average is coming up on a on a nightly basis, and it looks like whatever adjustment he's had to make to being a full time adjustment that he's making that adjustment. So this is a, I guess, a carryover of last year where he would play a couple games, then not play a day or a couple day. I guess <laughs> for Twins fans, you'd rather have what he's doing now than not playing at all. It's just it's it. It's got to be frustrating, you know, to watch. You want to see him out there. You want you want to see him make those amazing catches like he's done so many times. But I guess you know beggars can't be choosers in this particular spot right now. Right. Well, and as much as we want to see him out there, I think you can imagine how much he wants to yeah. be out there. And and he considers himself, for good reason, to be one of the best baseball players in the major leagues, and, and not a DH. Uh, and then we talked about this, I think, on one of our earlier shows on the last road trip. He had a stretch over for ten, right. with ten strikeouts. So if, so if that part of your game isn't going well, well, then you're really fighting it, right, mentally, because the only way as a designated hitter he can help the team is to hit and then run if he gets on the bases. Well, he wants to help out in center field. He wants to do what Ben and did yesterday. Yeah. Make a great catch, right? That's part of his game. He has said, like most outfielders, I know Torrey Hunter said it too, he enjoys taking a home run away more than hitting one. And so uh, to see Byron come up every half hour or whenever, and that's, that's what we've got right now. Yeah. And we'll see whether the plan of attack changes. I think if this team continues to play well, and it looks like they're going to get to the playoffs. I, I think there will be an adjustment made. We will see him hopefully out there in the outfield 
Uh, but again, you know, it's kind of hard to argue with the results five weeks into the season. Email comes in to ask you how far away are we from seeing Alex Kirilov in the major leagues? Yeah, and you know, Kyle Farmer, God bless him, he played his first game for the St. Paul Saints yeah. yesterday after getting hit in the mouth with a pitch. <laughs> um, <laughs> These things, as they say, normally take care of themselves, but where would Kirillov fit in right now? Larnick <laughs> is leading the team and runs batted in, yeah. playing very well in the outfield. You're not going to take Joey Gallo off of first base right now. Oh. Rocco said the other day he thinks he's the best fielding first baseman in the American League. Uh, so there's <laughs> there aren't any jobs open right now <laughs> unless you want to get rid of you know Nick Gordon, who's a super utility player, or Willie Castro, or somebody like that. So I think the right now the plan is for Kirilov to just play every day, get his at bats, yep. make sure the wrist is healthy, and I'm pretty sure the numbers will be there and he'll force the issue. Gonna be interesting to see how this plays out. Now we talked about all about the depth and the starters. Now it's gonna be needed with both Kenta Maeda and Tyler Malley going down. Let's Give, give us an update on each of these guys, Dick, of when, how long, I mean, with Mally's at least a month. We don't really even know on Maeda when I will see either one of these guys again. Both guys are shut down for an extended period of time. And then, of course, then they have to go back to late February and build themselves back up again. So it doesn't, in the short term, look very promising for either guy helping the Twins very much. And, boy, what was it? Two weeks ago, we were talking about how enviable yeah. a spot the Twins were in because they had their five starters and two guys in AAA uh, who would be up at the major league level with right. most other teams. Well, now they're here, right? And then you've got Simeon Woods Richardson who's down there, and he might get a shot too. It's just amazing, and it's not just the Twins. It's amazing the attrition how many injuries there are in the game, not just on pitchers, but over two thirds of the injuries this year in baseball, people on the injured list have been pitchers. And so now the, the conspiracy theorists are already out there about the, the pitch clock, what role it might play in all these pitchers going down and uh, talking with Glenn Perkins uh, in the last homestand. He said, well, the average pitch is thrown with like six seconds left on the pitch clock. You know, so it's not like they're out of breath and uh, they're taking yeah. every second they can. I don't know what the answer is. I, I, I think the core of the issue is the human body wasn't meant to throw a baseball 95 miles per yeah. hour for an extended period of time. Uh, even the, the durable starters, the dominant starters, the DeGroms of the world are breaking yeah. down. So I don't know how you back away from where we're at, but but it's like, Let's stomp on the accelerator in the first inning and see how long you can go. And if you <laughs> blow, you blow. Yeah, that's that's the way it is right now with pitchers. So now we're going to see a heck of a lot more of Louis Varland and Bailey Ober. And we were talking when, when you were still in Fort Myers that I thought Ober had a heck of a chance to break camp with the team. He's done nothing to dissuade that one of the times he's been he's been up in the big club so far this year. Yeah, and I'm not surprised that Bailey handled that really, really well. Yeah. He had one of the better springs in camp, certainly better than Maeda and um, Malley, uh, but he kept his mouth shut. He went to AAA, he pitched well there, got a shot. Now he's here for, one would think, for a while, and uh, that speaks to the young man and you know where his head and heart are at, but now he is where he belongs in a major league rotation and same too for Louis Varland who'll get the start tonight. So, you know, I think we said it on the telecast a, a week or so ago, somebody coined the phrase and it was probably 150 years ago. You can never have enough pitching, right? <laughs> well, whoever said it was right. And here we are. And every organization, all 30 teams are in kind of the same boat. Well, how are we going to get through this month? And we're only in May. <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, what's it going to be like in August and September? Oh. So we'll have to wait and see. Right now, the Twins are, are, they have the luxury, the blessing of having their top three guys healthy and pitching well. And they have been really, really good. We'll break yeah. here. We come back. Much more with Dick Bramer in Chicago as the Twins get ready to face one of the very best in baseball. Dylan Cease goes for the White Sox tonight. Much more we come back on Hot Mike on WDAY Extra, KSFL in Sioux Falls and Inforum.com. We're back after this. Our crews break down every angle of the biggest stories. WDAY News. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Cody Mack. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers 
take Cody Mount from North Dakota State and Hankinson, North Dakota. Now that it's over and done with, what's the reaction? What's the feeling? Ready to freaking play football again. <laughs> now I'm just excited to just go down to Tampa Bay and actually play some football. Count on the news leader, WDAY News. Hi, I'm Robin Hubner. Help create a world free of multiple sclerosis at the Dakota Medical Foundation Little Black Dress and Tie Evening Gala, Friday, May 5th at the Moorhead Armory Event Center. Enjoy a meal, cocktails, live auction, local music, and a speaker affected by MS. Proceeds help drive critical research. Black dress and tie are optional. Reservations are required. Scan this QR code or visit DMF Little Black Dress and Tie for ms.betterworld.org. My son had a full-blown asthma attack. It came out of nowhere. The unsettling thing about some symptoms is you don't always know what's causing them. He had a reaction triggered by cockroach allergens. Threats to your health can come from unexpected places. Get the facts. Visit pestworld.org. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. The same way you plan each detail for those moments. Start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. The end of hunger and poverty starts here. Your gift of an animal from Heifer International can help a family with food and income, all while caring for the earth. Heifer International. Learn more at heifer.org. For children fighting critical illness, we can make the stars align. Because when we come together, hope and joy will shine. Help us make every wish come true. I'm Naheem Hines, running back for the Indianapolis Colts and proud supporter of the Muscular Dystrophy Association. My mom was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy when I was 14, and I watched her struggle. But MDA helped her get the best treatments and care, and they also help kids like my buddy Ethan. My name is Ethan, and I'm 12 years old. Thanks to the Muscular Dystrophy Association and people like you, I have more hope than ever before. From day one, they've treated me like family at my local care center. MDA is the only one that funds over 150 care centers across the U.S. to help provide state-of-the-art care for adults and kids like me. For over 70 years, MDA has been transforming the lives of people living with muscular dystrophy, ALS, and other related neuromuscular diseases. They fund the research for breakthrough treatments, care, and cures. And MDA provides support to thousands of families like mine and Ethan's in communities like yours. Thanks to MDA, kids and adults can live life to its fullest. Join us and learn more at MDA.org today. Federal investigators blame human error for a deadly natural gas explosion. We all remember where we were that morning. We could actually see the smoke from our farm here, which is close to 20 miles away. It started to pull right off the bat. Both tractors just kind of started to spin out, and those are big tractors. So I knew something wasn't right. Out of nowhere, I just heard a big boom. The tile plow ruptured into the pipeline. Once the gas got through the intakes of the tractors is when it ignited. As soon as I heard that boom, I started running as fast as I could. The ground literally started erupting from my feet. They were highly respected and they were good at what they did. And it was one of those accidents that when it was done, made people step back and pause. If an accident can happen to them, it can happen to anyone. Watch the rest of the story at 3secondslater.org. And remember, Farm Safe starts by contacting 811. Welcome back, everybody, to Hot Mike as we roll on on a Wednesday. Dick Bramer back with us from Chicago. Twins White Sox coming up game two tonight. Dylan Cease will go for the White Sox. Louis Varland starting for the Twins. If if I know Twins fans have probably got a good uh, glimpse of Dylan Cease. In your opinion, what makes him such a good pitcher for Chicago? Well, he's got all sorts of uh, stuff. He's got a great fastball, great curveball, and all that. Twins fans might remember that uh, Luis Arise broke up his no-hit yeah. bid last year, late last year here in Chicago. So he will give the Twins hitters will have their hands full, but even Cease coming into the game's got an ERA of over four. So he hasn't pitched well, as well as he can yet. But you look at the Chicago rotation and with Giolito going tomorrow, Lance Lynn and, and uh, Kopech last night, if they can 
start playing better baseball, they're going to be a formidable team in the American League Central and, and ceases the anchor of that rotation. Interesting for a division rival uh, with the Tigers that the Mets are there and it's going to be Max Scherzer today and then Justin Verlander tomorrow. That, I don't... I don't know how many people are going to Tiger games now. We're going to find out later this summer when the Twins go there. But that might bring some people out to see Scherzer and Verlander the next couple of days. And to think that for a while they had uh, oh. the Tigers had both those guys yeah. in the rotation along with Anabel Sanchez, yeah. Doug Fister, and I'm leaving somebody out. Uh, Zimmerman. Uh, they had Jordan Zimmerman. Rick Zimmer. yeah. was there. Jordan Zimmerman. They had Jordan Zimmerman, if I remember right. They had him too. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, in, in their heyday, it was like, you know, yeah. we would go there, and the Twins weren't very good. And you, and you look at the rotation, <laughs> the pitching matchups, like, you know, Cease against Varland. And I, I think Varland's going to pitch well. The Twins got a chance to win. But yeah. every time we'd go to Detroit, and it would be Verlander against, I won't even name the names we were running up. Like, <laughs> All right, we got no chance in game one. We got no chance in game two, no chance in game three. And the amazing thing is they had those guys together yeah. for, I think, three years, and they did not win a World Series yeah. with all that starting pitching. Yeah, that's just, you kind of shake your head at that. Speaking of unreal starting, I mean, look at it, the American League East and see Tampa's 24 and six. Baltimore, who I thought was right on the cusp of being a, a playoff team a year ago, 20 and nine. The Yankees are in last in the American League East. We're a month in. Can we start making some generalizations about who's good and who's not? Well, right now, the Yankees are in last place for good reason, for on merit, because they're all banged up. Yeah. They don't have Stanton or Judge right now. The Twins won the season series, and uh, the Guardians came back and beat them in the ninth inning two nights ago. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it might be Boston's a lot better than I yep. thought they were going to be. At least they, they're playing really well right now. So it's a really rugged division. I think the Twins will be glad uh, to not have to play Tampa Bay for a while yet. <laughs> Hopefully they'll cool off. But, you know, that's one of the things about, and we mentioned it last night with the White Sox. Yeah, they played poorly, but they played. Everybody but one team uh, has a winning record yeah. on their schedule so far. Now they've beaten the White Sox. That's how they've gotten a, a winning record. But they really had a rugged schedule in the month of April. And things with this schedule even out, everybody's got to play yeah. everybody now. So, We'll see how it plays out, but the American League East, Toronto, to me, is the favorite, my favorite, to win that division. Mm. They just look like they're really good up and down in every facet of the game. Well, I look, too, in the National League Central, where the Pirates are 10 games over 500 in first place. I mean, Pittsburgh has been m bad forever, and to see them doing well, that I know it's May 3rd, but it's still, that's that's a good sign. Yeah, it's May 3rd, and I think a lot of people picked the Cardinals to win the division, and they're 10 games back. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's amazing. You, you've got some underachieving teams like St. Louis in the National League, Chicago in the American yeah. League, teams that we expected to be at or near the top, and then you've got the Baltimores and the Pirates, and I think everybody thought the Rays were going to be good, not as good as they have been, but it's wonderful for the game to have these teams, these markets that have been suppressed for one reason or another, haven't had a really good product on the field. And, and suddenly, you know, with some shrewd moves along the way, uh, suddenly they're up at the top and look to be getting better every yeah. year. Now, fans will see if they look at a box score. I don't know if fans still look at a box score, but, you know, they hear Luis Arise's batting average. I'm sure you saw that or people are paying attention to it. And granted, Pablo Lopez has been really good. How, for Twins fans, how would you tell them to say, okay, you look at that. How would you tell them to react when they see what Arise is doing with the Marlins right now? Well, I know he went one for three last night, but going into play last night, he had an on-base percentage of 500. <laughs> and he was among the league leaders in OPS, which is on-base plus slugging, right? Yep. But we tried to make the point last night during the telecast, Gallo doesn't have enough plate appearances to be among the league leaders, but his OPS is almost identical to Luis Arises, and you could not find two more different ball players <laughs> to arrive at the same statistical yeah. point than Louis Arise no and Joey way. Gallo. Gallo does it with his power, his slugging percentage, and Louis does it with his, uh, you know, on base percentage and all that. I looked at his stat line yesterday. He only has one triple. This is Arise now. Yep. He only has one triple, and he only has one home run, and he had the good fortune of hitting them both. On the same in the same game where he also hit a double and a single, he got the hit cycle. for the cycle yeah. a couple of weeks ago. 
So it's a great story over there. And the Marlins are playing pretty good yep. baseball above 500. And uh, let's hope that that, uh, that lasts, even if you don't care for the Marlins. I think we all love Louie. So coming up here after this, you guys will head to Cleveland just for a heads up for people. The Friday night game will be the Apple TV game. So that's a, a streaming game only. The rest of the games will be uh, back on Bally. And then after that, it's uh, the National League West to get familiar with, along with the Cubs in there, which is another part of the new funky part of the schedule is you're going to see the Padres, the Dodgers, who uh, very well could be slugging it out in October, just like they did last year. And the Dodgers have been one of the disappointments so far, too. They haven't played as well yep. uh, as they have in the past. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the weekend series in Cleveland. We all know that the Guardians ran away from the Twins yep. in September. Twins finished 14 games back. But the, the Guardians uh, convincingly won the season series against the Twins. It was... 14 and you know five or whatever it was and if the twin 13 and six i believe it was so and if the twins had won that season series 13 to six they didn't we know that heartbreaking loss after heartbreaking loss but if the <laughs> twins had won that season series by that margin they would have tied the guardians for first place even though by season's end they were 14 games right. out so it's it's you know it's been said many times, you can't win a division early, but you can lose it early. Uh, and that, I think, is centered around the notion that you've got to play well within oh, no. your division, particularly against the one team that looks to be your main opponent. Great to see you, as always. Have a great call tonight. Safe travels uh, to Cleveland, and we'll see you next week back home, okay? And if any of your viewers, listeners, have any ideas what a guy is supposed to do with an off day in Cleveland on Friday, <laughs> have him uh, relay those ideas through you to me. Okay? And, it, and, and it's not your first trip there. So, you know, you've no, been there no, a few I, times. I, so I, I think I've done everything there is to do in Cleveland. <laughs> Thanks, Dick. We'll see you next week. You got it. There he goes. Dick Braver, voice of the Twins on Bally Sports North. Twins and the White Sox, 6 o'clock tonight in Chicago. They'll wrap up the series tomorrow with a day game. And then, as I mentioned, the game Friday night against Cleveland is the first of the Apple TV games. Uh, the next two Fridays, Cleveland, uh, this one, and then the following Friday against the Cubs are both Apple TV+. Plus. So the only way you can watch that is streaming either uh, through Apple TV or through your phone is the only way to be able to watch. We're going to take a break. We come back. We'll shift gears and talk some hoops. UND has been gobbling up some big-time players, including getting one of its top players back. We'll discuss that with the head coach of the Fighting Hawks. Paul Sather joins us when we come back on Hot Mike on WDAY Extra, KSFL, and Forum.com. How to look cool while also staying cool. The heat is on, but don't sweat it. Carson Kressley has summer style solutions. Prints are everywhere and they're really a big summertime trend. Then the winningest man in barbecue breaks down his brisket. Isn't that pretty? That's good. Plus, let's hit the road. Road trip snacks that are anything but boring. If you're driving, I'm going to be eating. Mixed Rachel. Weekdays at 3 on WDAY WDAZ. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. He sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. Basically, he had to relearn everything. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. We have our own journey, and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veteran's guide to navigate your caregiving journey. When you or a loved one is diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it can be tough to know where to turn. But the Alzheimer's Foundation of America is here for you. We've helped tens of thousands of people through our seven-day-a-week helpline, connected communities nationwide with information and support through our Educating America Tour. And our telephone-based support groups meet weekly, providing assistance and support to families. We do it all because of one thing, you. Join us in the fight against Alzheimer's and donate today. ALZFDN.org or call 866-232-8484. Here it is. Look how cheap it is. Go for it, Steph. Be careful what you buy online. It's finally here. Counterfeit products are illegal. They are fake and can be damaging to you, your property, and your wallet. Go, 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 go. It looks real, but I don't have a good feeling about this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, no, no. 
go. Buying fake products can cost you the health of your face, skin, and eyes, or scar you for life. Real products are tested for safety. Buy the brand. Protect yourself. This message is brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council and the United States Patent and Trademark Office. You're smart. Buy smart. Go for real. Go for real. Go for real. We got lots of money over here. I want to go for it. So do I. Let's do it. You bet your life. Hey, give me the money. Alrighty. $5,000. Boosting the economy. You seriously asking me this question, Jay? <laughs> Call the island. What are we doing over here? Every weekday. Yeah, hey, give me that money. Oh, oh yeah. I'm going to give it to you like an Italian uncle. Here you go. You get yourself a little something there. There you go. Right there. <laughs> weekdays at 3.30 p.m. Autism is a common, but such a heterogeneous, such a complex condition that describes many different individuals with different types of symptoms and different types of challenges. As a physician, I had so many questions. And unfortunately, when patients would come to me, I couldn't really give them a lot of answers. As a geneticist as well, I started to appreciate that at least for some individuals with autism, there was an underlying genetic basis and that we could really start to understand in a much more precise way what was going on for them by understanding the genes, how it affects the brain, how it affects behavior, and how it affects other parts of the body as well. When we think about how many people we need to answer the hundreds of questions that we all have about autism, we start to need tens of thousands of individuals that have the same types of symptoms to be able to answer those questions. Join us today. Go to sparkforautism.org. Welcome back, everybody, to Hot Bike here as we roll out on a Wednesday morning. WDAY Extra, KSFL, Inforum.com. We've uh, been following, obviously, all the moving and goings on, and not just uh, football, basketball-wise, because uh, roster management never stops once the season uh, gets done. And it's been really interesting to see what's been going on with the, uh, the UND men's basketball team as they've added a couple of players, both highlight names that for basketball fans in the area, they certainly uh, would know. And we figure, why not go to the horse's mouth and ask him exactly what's been going on? As we welcome back to our show, UND men's basketball head coach uh, Paul Sather joins us uh, on a Wednesday. It's great to see you. Um, it's just been, I know, a a busy, busy time. The uh, there is no off season anymore because it goes from playing, recruiting, portal, recruiting, and then by the time we know you're, you're back playing again. But uh, tell us about the the additions here. Was this a a concerted effort, or are these kind of somehow they landed back in your lap, so, so to speak? Well, I think it's always a little bit of both. I think I, th I think it's a, a our staff, you know, just has been a, done an awesome job just just working and, and working sometimes is being on the road and away from families and spending that time recruiting. Uh, sometimes working is just putting hours in, in the office and spending a lot of time on the phone and doing what you need to do. And then then working is getting the kids on our campus and getting them a chance to see it. And, you know, with the weather we've had uh, this this spring, if you want to call it that was. Uh, it, it made it made for some challenges because I felt like every time we had someone coming on campus, there was eight to ten inches of snow coming, or there's forty mile an hour winds coming. So it's just uh, there, there was challenges presented, and uh, we're, we're we're happy with with how it's gone so far. Um, but you know, the most important thing with all of it is the time with the, with the guys we have returning and and making sure we're spending the time with them. And so you're trying to balance a lot of recruiting with spending time with the guys that are coming back because. Man, that's the that, that that's the most important thing is is those young people that really want to be here and and here for the right reasons that that see what we're trying to do and are believing in what we're trying to do and uh, and so like with all that going on we don't want to miss workouts we want to be there for them every every single chance we can and because you you can sit and honestly say like we just we didn't miss much at all with those guys yeah. that are here and so it's that balance man and 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 it's it is like somebody said to me yesterday I was watching my daughter play softball and. And uh, it's like, well, have you got a chance to relax? I'm like, well, not yet. Like, like it's it's fun to go watch a softball game, but but at the end of the day, like we just since that game ended for us, like it's just yeah. been go. 
And uh, and I and my staff is just they, they've done our staff has just done an awesome job with that. Well, I got to ask because it's a question that you just don't see on, on Tyree Ian Acho Paul about him coming back. This is a young man I know you worked hard to get to Grand Forks. When did the the channel start again about having a potential reunion? Yeah, you know it's interesting. He he reached out to us and. and there, there, I think, lies the difference. I, you know, I think people, for, for me personally, I, I love coaching him when he was here. Tyree's a fantastic young guy. He was a COVID year when Tyree was here. I think yeah. he had to, I think he had two, two different times along with the rest of our guys had to isolate. Um, you know, at, at that time he was here, we're asking all of our student athletes across the country, we're asking them to, to, to not go out, to isolate themselves. And, and so people across the entire U.S. and around the world had a, had a, not a great so not a, not such a great experience when it comes to life outside of just your basketball experience. And 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 I, and I think you know he had a great experience from basketball because, like I told him, you were freshman of the year because you were happy. Um, hmm. and, and and so for him to call us back and 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 kind of say the things that he said showed a lot of maturity, showed a lot of humility. Um, I, I think he had to probably. Uh, really, really ask himself a lot of different times before that phone call took place, before that communication took place, is is this what I want to do? Because, yeah. man, there's some things that I've got to face if I'm doing this. And so for him to stretch that hand out, Dom, honestly, like it, it took me a little bit of time, honestly, to just think about it. But but uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for us to change a narrative a little bit of of, of this transfer portal and kind of how it's impacted us. And, uh, and we, we believe in him and, and we're excited about getting him back. And, and, and so we, we, when, when, when we had those conversations and they were very honest conversations, yeah. um, he, he, he took the time and really thought with his family about it and, and decided, Hey, this is, this is what I want to do. Was there any hesitation on your part or talking to the, your team? And I know you've, tra- you've, you've got a, almost a new roster from when he was there, but for the, and the, the carryovers about, Hey, I'm I'm thinking about doing this. Can you tell us about about that? Yeah, you know, I think at first you gotta you gotta look at the world we're in right now in college athletics. I think <laughs> and really make a decision on moving forward. The changes you've got to make, um, and 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 the perspective you got to have with maybe what you might have been five or ten years ago. It's changed, and and I think the big thing for us was um, how he. How, how Tyree handled it. Mm. I think that's that was the most important thing. Um, Brady Danielson's the only guy that's on our team right now that actually was with <laughs> uh, his teammate, yeah. right? And, and so we talked to Brady about it, and Brady loved playing with him. Uh, I, I think he understands how good a player he is, but I think he also understands the day-to-day. Like, Tyree's the, the kind of young guy that shows up to practice with a smile on his face. Like, he kind of has that energy, and, and, uh, pers- and he just has that way about him where – he doesn't drain. He doesn't drain from you. Uh, and and I, I loved coaching him. Now, I was mad when he left, right? Yeah. I, and, I, and I told Tyree that. Like, mad, disappointed, the work we put in to get him. But there's a lot of other work that went in. You know, I, I think of Coach Stevens and the time he put in recruiting him uh, and, and the time he put in with him in a lot of other ways. Uh, but but uh, I'm telling you, like, sometimes that relationship you build, uh, that at that time, I think really it was a real relationship. And I, I think he felt like it was a real relationship. Mm. And that's what gave him the ability to maybe reach back to us and say, you guys believed in me. I believed in you guys. And, and I maybe got some bad advice two years ago. And, and you know, it is what it is. Like, I, 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 I don't want to be passive aggressive on this. So, like, I, 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 I really feel like it's, it's stuff where I, I've been able to really work it out and visit with him yeah. and, uh, and feel great about it. So, it, it, it is it is one of those things where he can help our team. Um, we've we've got some work to do to make sure to, to see if he can play even this year. Um, but either way, you, you know, getting getting him back here, I think long term, we get we get to maybe hit, have his last couple of years of college basketball at UND, um, and, and I think there's an opportunity there. How much of a paperwork thing is it, Paul, for him to be eligible this year? Is it more with the NCAA clearinghouse about what what goes next now? Yeah, it, it, that's all going to be in the. NCAA and compliance in those hands. Like we, we, there's not a lot we're going to be able to do with it. Um, that's, that's going to be, that's going to be something that it's going to take a little bit of time to know and, yeah. and get an answer. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. But you, you know, the big thing I told him was don't, don't come here based on you thinking you're going to get a waiver. And I, and I made a point yeah. to that. Yeah. 
uh, on my first phone call is is you've got a place where you're having success where you're playing will they will they have you back um i don't want you coming here based thinking that you're going to get a waiver because then yeah. if you don't then there's this disappointment so don't so don't do that you got bad advice two years ago you're saying i'm not going to give you bad advice now so like we weren't sitting here just Tr trying to throw champagne and roses at him, making you know, <laughs> think it's just going to be perfect. Um, I, I think he understands that there's a there's a very good chance that that he's going to have to redshirt for a year. Tell us about we'll see. Uh, about Eli King coming in. That's a young man I don't know that was burning up the state of Minnesota in his high school days in Caledonia. Goes to Iowa State, enters the portal. How? What, again, was this a conversation that the uh, that he reached out? How did that all work to get him to Grand Forks? Well, we were, I was actually with Coach Herbst at uh, at Hutch at the National JUCO Tournament okay. watching when when all when it all shook out. And, and we just, l listen, you know, I, I think anybody that's within this region that's a college basketball coach knows the King family yeah. and, and all the different brothers that have come through. So we've had a chance to watch him since he was, I think, I think playing AAU basketball way in his early years, right? So like we've had a chance to watch him uh, and, and and gotten to know him and just know the family, if not directly, but just kind of through just all the different evaluations we've had a chance to see him. So we were all pretty familiar uh, with 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 each other in that way. Um, and and listen, we just worked. I, at the end of the day, we worked. We we did what we needed to do um, to put ourselves in a position where I think he felt North Dakota was a great option for him. Um, you know, he had a couple teammates from from AAU that we have here yep. uh, that I think he felt really comfortable with. Um, and, you know, I think sometimes in this in this in this recruiting world we're in right now, uh, there, there's going to be a lot of kids that that you know when they go to these Power Five schools, what they're what they're finding out is a lot of times there's a lot of there's a lot of 22, 23 year old men transferring to these places. Right. So when you're 18 coming in. You know, it, it, it's just it, it, things don't just always happen, and and I think opportunities like you, you see what a Trace and Eagle staff, a BJ Oman, and Elijah Brooks did for us as true freshmen. Um, I, you know, that, there, there's value in that. There's value in getting out, of, getting a chance to go play. There's a value to yeah. getting on the floor and getting out there and learning, playing through mistakes, and 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 and, and getting a chance to get on the floor and competing. And and so I think he sees a really good opportunity with with young people that he's familiar with. Uh, to come in and have an impact, and uh, he's a great fit. Like he's a he's a terrific young person. He's a really good basketball player. But man, we're excited about the kind of young man he is, the kind of student he is, and the, the, you know just what he's going to bring day to day for us uh, as as a young man, a high character, and just he wants to win. Like he's in a scratch, he's in a fight and scratch and claw every single day to compete for opportunity. And uh, and I you know we're excited about getting him here. Our viewers got to see Paul Zach Kraft go crazy at the state basketball tournament here, not too far from us at the Shack. What were you really intrigued about? How about Zach as a basketball player to be able to bring him in? Shocked, shocked, absolutely shocked that that Northern Sun schools didn't just blow up all over mm. him. The guy's four and a half made threes at 41%. Yeah. Four and a half made threes at 41%. You show me how many other high school kids are doing four and a half threes at 41%. I, I've, he, you know, sometimes players fit your eyes. Uh, they they fit your eyes as far as how they play. Um, he reminds me of of a Tanner Kretschmann. He 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 kind of has those abilities. Uh, he he reminds me of of you know of, of a young AJ Plitzwhite a little bit when when I watched AJ Plitzwhite play, where he's never going to blow you away with how they look physically. Um, but man, you know, Zach's put work in. He's all a six two, and he's up there close to 175 pounds now. And I'm telling you four and a half made threes at 41%. That's, but, but he's got a feel like, like he's got, he's got his, his way of, uh, he's a good athlete, mm -hmm. but his ability to play in the court, you know, um, change his speed, change the direction, understanding how to play without the ball, understanding how to play with the ball, making a lot of right plays. Uh, and he's got some toughness and some just fight in him. And I told him, I, I just, all I can tell you is I really, I, I really believe in you. I really believe in you. I really believe you can play at this level. Um, and, and you, you know, you got to kind of bet on yourself a little bit with this, with this kind of opportunity um, because he, he, you know, he had maybe some scholarship opportunities that he, that he turned down to mm -hmm. come here, but I, I just really believe in the kid. I, 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 I love him. I, I really do. I've enjoyed watching him play and uh, I, I'm excited about Zach Kraft. I, I just, I think there's a lot there. And, and when you get to go against, 
guys that he's going to be going against every day in practice, yeah. I think you're going to see some great growth. Before I let you go, can I? It, you, you always play some really good high major teams, and not do you have anything you can share with us and schedule wise that you're working I don't on yet? Think, I don't think I can share that stuff with you quite yet. <laughs> I think I'd get a phone call with some people not real happy with me if I shared that. But we are, and the fun thing is, it's going to be it's going to be pretty regional stuff again. Cool. We're going to get to play some power fives that that are in our region, which I I think that's awesome to be able to do that. It's it's great for our student athletes, yep. for our recruiting area, and for our families to be able to go without having a huge expanse to go watch their their kids play in that kind of setting. Uh, pretty pretty cool opportunity. So we're excited about it, and we'll let you know when we can. All right. I haven't got that clearance yet, though. <laughs> it's always great to catch up. Uh, I know you never get a, really a day off as a Division One men's basketball coach, but hopefully you can take some time to to chill and watch some more softball. Thanks for coming on this morning. We'll we'll talk to you down the road, okay? Thanks for having me, Dom. I appreciate Good it. Good to see you, bud. There he goes, Paul Sather, UND men's basketball head coach. Fighting Hawks are making some moves here in the offseason with a couple guys that people will know. The, the, the Ian Acho story is one that has caught my attention. Simply, obviously, he was the freshman of the year in the Summit in 2021. Um, went, played two years at James Madison. Now back. Um, obviously, there's going to have to be some paperwork figured out there, but potentially he could see the floor. Eli King was a stud in high school. He, and he, he had major football offers. Stanford, Notre Dame were talking to him to play football. Um, the fact that he's going to play basketball at Grand Forks, that's eye-opening, I think. And remember, they won six of their last nine. They played really good basketball down the stretch of the Summit League season. We'll take our final break. We'll come back. We'll put a bow on things, get you ready for a busy sports Wednesday. We'll do that when Hot Mike wraps right after this on WDAY Extra, KSFL, and Inforum.com. Spring has sprung. Visit Menards Garden Center for everything you need to get your garden growing. Choose from hundreds of beautiful, colorful flowers, lush trees and shrubs, and everything in between. Menards Garden Center is back in bloom. Stop in and get your garden on today. Assorted varieties of potted annuals are just $4.99 each after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. Plains Art Museum invites you to open your mind and embrace the unknown at our annual Spring Gala Wonderland. Join us on Saturday, May 6th for an evening of wonderment and delight, including an art auction featuring more than 100 local, regional, and national artists. Music by Mae Simpson and Star 4. Hors d'oeuvres by Chef's Table and Urban Foods Catering. Delicious desserts from Nicole's Fine Pastry and Cafe. And a wine tasting with Happy Harry's Bottle Shops. Tickets are available now at plainsart.org. If alcohol builds a wall around you, that doesn't let you see where you're going, that keeps you feeling isolated and alone, that makes you feel hopeless, know this. We're here to help if you want us to. It's never too early or too late to ask for help with a drinking problem. Alcoholics Anonymous, there is a way out. For more information, visit aa.org and download the Meeting Guide app. What is dementia? Is it the same as Alzheimer's? What is vascular dementia, Lewy body, FTD, TBI, and CTE? If someone has memory loss, does that mean they have dementia? Millions of Americans ask these questions every day. I did too, and I learned. My wife, Ginny, developed dementia. I didn't know what to do or what was coming next. I'm Kevin Jamison, volunteer and president of the Dementia Society of America. I'm excited to offer you a free guide to understanding dementia. It's filled with facts about dementia, care planning, how doctors can help, and ways to keep your brain as healthy as possible. The Dementia Society of America is a national nonprofit, and we're ready to answer your questions. You want to live life to the fullest. I know that. Ginny did too, and I'm confident that we can help. Get your copy of the guide. Go to 1-800-DEMENTIA.ORG or call 1-800-DEMENTIA. Thank you.
I want to beat cancer. I'm going to beat it. That's no doubt in my mind. I'm going to win this battle. Defeating cancer will take all of us. Join our team to help fund game-changing research that saves lives. At the V Foundation, V is for victory over cancer. V is for victory over the odds. V is for victory over health disparities. Victory over setbacks. Victory over the unknown. V is for victory over giving up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Join our team to help save lives. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind, it cannot touch my heart, and it cannot touch my soul. Join our team in the fight against cancer at V.org. All right, wrapping up our show here for a Wednesday morning, our thanks to Paul Sather for giving us a few minutes on the show today. Tomorrow, really excited about uh, one of our guests tomorrow, Hall of Famer, one of the all-time great coaches in the state of North Dakota, Scott Berry, who's stepping down after 43 years as the head baseball coach at Mayville State. Uh, it's wrapping up here over the next little bit, and he'll join us tomorrow on the show. Uh, one of my all-time favorite people to get a chance to talk to, and uh, this is it. Wrapping up his legendary career as baseball coach at Mayville State. And you, you can point to, I I know off the top of my head, at least 10 different guys who are current coaches or have coached that played for him. All that have a different story. And I'm sure we'll all come out of the woodwork here over the next little bit to wish him well. That's coming up on our show uh, tomorrow. Before we do what to watch, uh, Football Scoop usually does this. Zach Barnett, who writes for that website, predicts where college game day will go for that upcoming season. He posted this this morning about his prediction sites, which he has for week one. Of course, he's got Dion and college game day going to Colorado and TCU. Makes a lot of sense there. But as you scroll down to week number 10 of the season, which is November 4th, he says, while Tuscaloosa hosts the Deep South Super Bowl between LSU and Alabama, Brookings, South Dakota hosts the Dakota Marker game. Game day has been to town for this once before, a 2019 airing that happened to mark Pat McAfee's introduction to the show. This time around, North Dakota State at South Dakota State brings McAfee back as a full-time cast member, as well as the pageantry of a rivalry game pitting the last two FCS national champions. Let's go. Sign me up if that ends up happening. Although our game day is going on at the same time as theirs, but that would be a heck of a thing if uh, ESPN decides to come to town for that game in early November. Let's get you ready for what to watch before we get out of here on this Wednesday. Twins and White Sox, we mentioned coming up game two, six o'clock tonight, Valley Sports North. Game one of what should be a dynamite series, Edmonton and Vegas, 8.30 tonight, on ESPN, and you got game two, 76ers and the Celtics on TNT. Joel Embiid likely to play for Philly after he's named MVP. Could be back for the Sixers tonight. Thanks to our guests, to Drew Traft and Dick Bramer and to Paul Sather. If you missed any of our show, you can podcast it later today at Inforum.com. Everybody have a great Wednesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow on Hot Mike on WDAY Extra, KSFL, and Inforum.com. Have a great hump day, everybody. You and Delman are matching, we're matching on songs. <laughs> Live is Emmy nominated for Outstanding Daytime Talk Series and Talk Series host. Next live, Karen Gillan, our super villain turned superhero. He left out some important information, but that is the gist of it. In Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, plus Kathleen Turner. Our crews break down every angle of the biggest stories. WDAY News. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Cody Mouth. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers take Cody Mouth from North Dakota State and Hankinson, North Dakota. Now that it's over and done with, what's the reaction? What's the feeling? Ready to freaking play football again. <laughs> now I'm just excited to just go down to Tampa Bay and actually play some football. Count on the news leader. 
WDAY News. Attention companies, schools, public and private organizations, and individuals. Get ready January 5th through the 15th in 2024 for Feed My Starving Children Fargo Pack at the Fargo Dome. They're aiming to pack 10 million meals for children in need across the world, and they need your help. Be a part of this incredible cause by becoming a sponsor, making a donation, or volunteering to pack. This event will bring together over a quarter of the greater Fargo-Moorhead area. Turn hunger into hope and get involved by visiting FargoPack.org. Catch Bison Softball on WDAY Extra. Watch NDSU take on the Omaha Mavericks in a doubleheader starting Friday at noon. Bison Softball only on WDAY Extra. I've been a GH fan my entire life. I love the Tam fam. I still think about the time I was at Port Charles. I don't believe it. But you can believe our shows are on back to back. GH fans and the Tam fam love a good story. Weekdays at 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Happy Wednesday. We are looking at a beautiful day ahead. Plenty of sunshine over the area, save for a couple of high clouds. It's going to be mostly blue skies over the area, and you're going to hear me say this a lot throughout the next hour. We're going to be looking at our first potential 70 degree day over the area, and of course, that's going to result in a beautiful afternoon and evening. Great day to be outside, go for a walk, go uh, grill some food outside. It's going to be overall pretty nice mid part of the week, and the rest of the week is looking pretty good as well. And then we turn our attention over to the weekend, not dropping temperatures too much.